Hey friends, step into my kitchen. Glad to have you with us on Through the Prism of Chrism. We're talking on sound biblical judgments. Today I want to speak on this title, Against My Better Judgment. Have you ever done that? You know, there's a time when Samuel told Saul, I want you to stay put. Don't do any action until I get there in seven days. Well, seven days passed and out of fear, uh, Saul went ahead and sacrificed a burnt offering, which he really didn't have any right to do. Now, as soon as he got done, Samuel showed up, as you would guess. And immediately Saul started backpedaling and making excuses. And in 1 Samuel 13 and verse 12, he said to Samuel, The Philistines will come down to us at Gilgal, and I've not made supplication to the Lord. Listen to this statement. So I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Forced himself against his better judgment. Have you ever done that? You ever questioned, what was I thinking? What made me do that? Well, let me ask some questions today. Number one, are you practicing common sense? Are you you using the good sense God gave you. Some decisions and judgments don't require a astrophysics degree. For instance, young Samson said, there's a new girl came to the office by the name of Delilah and she wants me to take her out for lunch. What do you think? Well, I think you ought to run for your life. Use some common sense. She's a Philistine. Number two, what does the word say about it? If the decision's going to be right, then the decision has to have light. Isaiah 8 and verse 20, to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. In other words, you need to know what the Bible says. And then number three, how does the judgment or the decision you're making relate to the law of love? James 2 and verse 8 says, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. Listen to that. You do well. In other words, your decision is going to come out well. The apostle, uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love never fails. So if you go against the law of love, then you're going against your better judgment. Then number four, what would Jesus do? You know, we have the thought, WWJD, what would Jesus do? That originated with Thomas A. Kempis uh, back in the 1400s. In other words, uh, in making judgments, we need to see through the eyes of Jesus. Uh, somebody asks, should I get a tattoo? Or is it all right to have a few cocktails with dinner? Or somebody says, should I go to the Marilyn Manson concert? <laughs> well, I want to ask, uh, what would Jesus do? Not prying, just to asking, okay? And then number five, what do you sense down in your your spirit. I told you the other day that you have an inner polygraph or lie detector test, and you have to learn to hone and to trust your perception. Some people know what they're supposed to do or what they're not supposed to do, but they do it anyway against their better judgment, and they pay the consequences of it because they do what their flesh does. But listen, Christians have ESP. What do you mean by that? Enhanced spiritual perception. You know, we're supposed to be spirit-led. We, we're enhanced because we have the Bible, okay? And uh, perception is not what I think. Perception is what I know. Even the woman at the well said of Jesus, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She was right. Second Kings 4 and verse 9, the Shunammite woman said to her husband concerning Elisha, I perceive that this is a holy man of God that passes by us continually. Well, she was right. You have to learn your to trust your perception. Number six, uh, what are people that are wiser than you saying about it? What your pastor advise you to do? You know, in Proverbs 11 and 14, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And then in Acts chapter 27, verse 10, uh, Paul warned the centurion about a trip they were taking. Listen, he said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but of our lives also. Paul said that. And of course the centurion listened to the shipmaster, ignored Paul's wise counsel, and the ship sank as a result. You need to listen to good counsel. Number seven, what does experience tell you? Listen, been there, done that is a great teacher. Paul said in Romans chapter five, that tribulation works patience, and patience works experience, and experience works hope, and hope makes not ashamed. In other words, what I've experienced gives me me hope and understanding, and as a result, I'm not going to mess up on my decisions because I've been there and I've done that. I know what the devil's trying to do, okay? So, hope you're enjoying this series. I'm Chris with Through the Prism of Chrism. Like if you like, share this with a friend, feel free to comment, and tune in tomorrow for more on Through the Prism of Chrism.